We're talking my least favorite picks in every round of the first 10 rounds of fantasy football drafts this year. On Tuesday, we did the same video, but my favorite picks. So we're going to link that down below. I suggest you either stop what you're doing, go watch it now, watch it after this video. It don't matter. Whatever you're doing, if you're below the fold here, if you scroll down a little bit, make sure you hit the button that looks like this. All right. Now that we're acquainted with each other, the next most logical and best thing to do is to tuck your shirt in. Flex your traps, that's all I got. Preseason's already kicked off. This is going live on Friday. I'm filming this on Wednesday. So if something happened on the Thursday night games that makes whatever I'm saying seem ludicrous, outlandish, sluggish, ridiculous, it is what it be. Now, when you're looking at the first round, I mean, it's hard to find a player you don't like. There's a reason they're all going in the first round. They're all extremely talented players. I would say if I really had to nitpick here, my least favorite picks are probably Christian McCaffrey up there at the three, only because I like to grab a wide receiver if I'm up that far. Like, I would take Tyreek Hill over Christian McCaffrey, but he doesn't really fall that much further down. Cooper Cup. Definitely my least favorite in the top five right now because of that hamstring injury. I know that, you know, they came out right away and they said it's a multi-week injury and now they're saying it's day-to-day. -day. So we're not getting like a real report on anything right now. I need to see a full week of practice prior to him getting on the field. And no, I don't give a shit that he gets a full week of practice so that he's comfortable with the playbook. That I don't, I, I don't understand why people comment th dumb shit like that. I want a full week of practice so that I know he's full go and that he's not going to re-injure himself within the first week of playing in a real football game. I want full speed practice for a full week prior to kickoff, and I'll be comfortable grabbing Cooper Cup here again. Weirdly as it is, Kelsey at the six, not what I'm going to do. I just don't like to build my team around a first-round tight end. I'd rather have a wide receiver or a running back first and then build outwards that way. I'd rather Hawkinson in the fourth or Kittle in the sixth or Ingram in the eighth, anything like that. Obviously, Kelsey is a dominant force and a huge positional advantage for you, but I'm going to pass on Kelsey at six. After that, you probably have to jump down to like A.J. Brown at six because we we don't get as much consistency from him as we do as the other other elite options. And I do also think there's definitely a non-zero chance. I'd almost put it at like 20, 25, maybe even higher percentage chance that Devontae Smith actually outproduces him just straight up statistically. But I think he's more talented. Basically, A.J. Brown, I almost feel like is just Devontae Smith with 40 pounds, 50 pounds on his frame. So that's a, a terrible argument. But I do think if you look at the second half of the year numbers, Devontae Smith almost outproduced or actually did outproduce in a majority of categories Statistically, AJ Brown. So there's a chance that he ends up being like the two in that offense and not worth a first round pick when you have guys like Bijan going one pick before him. So those are probably the guys that I would like be the most hesitant to draft in the first round. In round two, we have Devontae Adams there as the wide receiver 10. Now on paper, that doesn't seem like a bad pick whatsoever, but it's a little early for me with the offense over there in Las Vegas, man. I've got like no hope for Jimmy G. He he has to lead a team that finally doesn't have unbelievable playmakers after the catch. Everything he was asked to do in San Fran was just get the ball out of his hands at the line of scrimmage and let Debo make plays, let George Kittle make plays, let C-Mac make plays, let whoever was in the backfield, whoever was on the on the wings out there every single year. Even Ayuk is a yak monster. Like every single player on that offense is pretty much top five yak player at their respective positions, which is why Jimmy G was almost like it was the only reason he was even remotely statistically relevant, in my opinion. Can he be like a game manager in a sense? Sure. And will Devontae Adams still have his monster games of 10 for 140 and two touchdowns? Yes. But I, I think we'll see lower floor games week to week because I don't think Jimmy G can really like carry this offense and he doesn't take shots downfield. Not like Derek Carr did last year. Even no matter what you feel about Derek Carr, Derek Carr threw the ball down the field at a much higher rate than Jimmy G does. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling I'm, I'm not simmered on on Devontae Adams right now. This entire round just kind of turns me off a little bit with Olave, Devontae Smith, and T. Higgins. Like I don't want to take those guys who, like, sure maybe they can finish as a top ten fantasy wide receiver. But the running backs going around them, the Pollards, Saquon's, Derek Henry, Jonathan Taylor, are the ones that are very likely to be workhorse running backs. And any of those guys can be the RB1, 2, or 3 on the year. And if you have a fantasy running back that finishes as the top three fantasy running back, those dudes like single-handedly get you into the playoffs where realistically, what's the ceiling for Devonta Smith with A.J. Brown next to him? What is the ceiling for T. Hit? Like the same argument I made for A.J. Brown having Devonta back and forth, right? Two, two sides of the same coin. 
to a double-sided, sorted fucking knife, whatever I'm trying to say out here. Y'all get the point. T. Higgins, same thing. Like, what is his ceiling with Jamar Chase on the field? I get it. Like, second round, cool. You're getting a good wide receiver. But I, I think you want to reserve your second round shots for great players, not good players. So here it's more so just like the positional group of the wide receivers going in the second half of the round. Round three... The first one that jumps off the page to me is Debo Samuel. Like, I, I'm not taking him in the third round. His ADP is 34 right now, wide receiver 18. He was awesome a couple of years ago because he scored nine rushing touchdowns. He will never even sniff that mark. And when you look at the numbers when he was on the field and C-Mac was also on the field, his, his stats fucking dipped, man. They took a nosedive, and while I think he's fantastic, he's awesome, I would love to have him on my team if I'm an NFL fan, just like the fantasy numbers I don't necessarily think are going to be there for right now. And then the rest of the, 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 rest of the round as it relates to running backs – I'm very weary on. I've pretty much been solely reserving the third round for the Calvin Ridleys, the Amari Coopers, but more importantly, like the quarterbacks. I love Hurts. I love Allen, and I love Mahomes if he ends up going the third, but right now his ADP is not there. Ramondre, I did love prior to getting some info fed to me that Zeke is, there's a good chance that Zeke signs in New England, so I'm holding the horses there. Josh Jacobs, is he holding out? I don't know. Brees Hall coming back from the ACL. Maybe Dalvin Cook sighting in New York. Jameer Gibbs is going to be a pass-catching back that adds some explosion to the offense, but David Montgomery is going to take all the goal line work, so I don't love the running backs going off in this range right now whatsoever so third round for me is like qb wide receiver range round four it's time to stop talking about strategy and just talk shit about my least favorite players let's just start with jerry judy i'm not there on jerry judy but he's just been hyped up as like the this elite he's basically the what amari like the way amari cooper came out everyone's like he's a, an elite prospect he's such a good route runner like amari cooper has relatively lived up to the hype he never became like super elite but he, he just rips off thousand yard seasons every year jerry judy has had multiple years now to like become that guy and has not put it together and it's like now russell wilson is kind of falling off a cliff so does he get it back together because if he does and if this offense implodes and jerry judy's obviously not going to be shit so i don't think there's enough risk baked into jerry judy's wide receiver 20 adp when you have these other young christian watson coming off a major breakout year drake london coming off a year with a 29 and a half percent target share entering his year two prime year terry mclaurin who's had like four straight thousand yard seasons deandre hopkins is whatever but you, you get the point here jerry judy has not done anything that those guys below him have done, but they're getting drafted ahead of him. And I, I don't know that I believe Jerry Judy is like this premier fucking route runner out there in Denver. I am not there yet, so I will absolutely let someone else take Jerry Judy. I'm also a little bit nervous about both of these backs. I don't think Najee Harris is very good. I don't think Travis Etienne is going to be a three-down back there with Tank Bigsby. I think Tank Bigsby is going to take some goal line work. I think Tank Bigsby is going to take some pass catching work. So as explosive as ETN is, and he'll have a lot of ceiling games, he makes me a little bit nervous to rely on. Now, middle of the fourth, I'm not like super fading. And I think the fact that he's fallen this far has kind of spoken to the fact that the fantasy industry is like moving him down a little bit. But the two guys I would say are my least favorite picks in this round are Jerry Judy and DeAndre Hopkins. I just don't see it happening in the Tennessee offense. He's not explosive really down the field they're just not a high volume passing offense he's splitting targets with Traylon Burks and Shiggy and Derrick Henry's going to get 25 carries a game so I'm out on D-Hop there at the 45th overall pick my least favorite picks in round five would have to be Jackson Smith and Jigba and Marquise Brown the two wide receivers at the bottom of this list JSN is now going like a full round above Tyler Lockett which I got no doubt that by the end of the year JSN will probably be on the field for like a decent amount of snaps but they're, he's not going to be an 80% player from the rip. The first half of the year, he's probably like a 55 to 60% player. This is still a team that wants to be a run first team as well. So like the volume won't necessarily be there. Lockett and Metcalf are dudes who just like eat up targets as well. I get the hype, but I just feel like it's too much dynasty focus on JSN being fifth round pick right now. I like Godwin a lot. Uh, Hollywood Brown, I want nothing to do with his Arizona offense if you have to invest early cap. Like no chance I'm taking... Marquise Brown in the fifth when Tyler Lockett goes in the sixth when Mike Evans goes in the sixth this offense is going to implode Kyler we have no idea when he's going to start playing he's I don't think he's on the field at all yet but I'm I'm out on those two wide receivers at the end of this round round six I'm cool with Kittle Lockett Sanders Akers T-Law Evans Pierce Dobbins Pittman the bottom three players on this list I'm probably out on they are probably my least favorite picks in the sixth round Pitts, I still think we need another year for him to put it together. I still think we need to figure out the QB situation, and I think Drake London is going to be a better player at his position than Kyle Pitts is at his position, which means he's going to be the target monster there. 
Addison, I think he's a good player too, but I feel like the sixth round for this kid is is a little bit too high for me. And Gabe Davis, I'm just completely off on it. I made a video last week of seven players to let your idiot league mates draft, and I went in on Gabe Davis. So those three guys at the bottom of the list, there are guys that I'm not touching. Seventh round gets a little more fun as it relates to this video. I am I'm out on Waller. Like the my, the picks in this round that I really do not like are Waller, Pickens. I don't want to say I'm fully out on DeAndre Swift, but I don't love him. If I had to lean 51-49 one way, is that I'm out. Javonta Williams and kind of Rashad White. I don't hate Rashad White at pick 82. Waller, I get it. He's going to get fed a lot of targets. But again, it's been like years since we've actually seen peak Waller. And like he's old. And like Jameson said in the video yesterday, you don't have multiple bad years, turn 31, and then turn back the clock. It very, very rarely happens, if ever. So I'd rather not put my chips onto that old plate there. Uh, Pickens is another dude that I comped him to like a Devontae Parker type, Mike Williams-ish type coming out of college. And I kind of feel like I was right on that call. And we don't know what this kind of like passing offense upside is for Pickens. Deontay Johnson is still a target magnet because he's so good at separating and nothing from last year tells me that he's still not that same player. So for Pickens, I'm not overly excited about him. I guess I'll like take some shots on him, but I would not take Pickens over Jahan Dotson. Swift, what scares me is like every report at a training camp right now pretty much has the roles penciled in. It's like Rashad Penny's an early down guy. If all stays healthy, Rashad Penny, early down guy, DeAndre Swift pass catching role, which is not very significant in the Philly offense with Jalen Hurts running the ball so much and not really dumping off the running backs. And then Kenny Gainwell playing like the four and two minute drills, which if you're the pass catching back like Swift is, that is a huge portion of like the fantasy points you would get. That's like three or four catches in a very short period of time. So that kills his value there. Javante Williams, like, we'll see what he looks like in the preseason games. Maybe I'll be proven wrong, but he's coming back so quickly, and it was a very serious injury. So I'm I'm okay being wrong on Javante Williams this year. I don't think he's going to be back to full health. I don't think we're going to see, like, a really, really ready-to-fucking-rip Javante Williams here. So I'm out on him with my seventh-round pick, absolutely. Round eight, we have Alvin Kamara and Pacheco sandwiching James Cook. James Cook is a guy I want nothing to do with. And again, a guy that I could be wrong on. I'm, I'm happy being wrong on him. James Cook is a dude who is small, who is a pass-catching specialist, who has never in his life, college or NFL, had a game of, of more than 14 carries. There are other goal linebacks on this roster. There are other thumpers on this roster. Damian Harris, Latavius Murray, another one, Damian Harris, I told y'all not to go all in on, and now he's hurt, and now Latavius Murray's taking all those carries, but he'll never get goal line work. He'll never be the early down thumper. You're hoping that he gets like five targets a game. I just, I just think it's so obvious that Cook is going to be a disappointment. So we're out on James Cook. I'm out on Kadarius Tony at this point. Those are probably my two least favorite picks of round eight. Round nine, I kind of feel gross taking like everyone in this round. But starting at Antonio Gibson, I'm I'm in on B Rob. I'm not in on Gibson. I guess Gibson like wants to be just the pass catcher there, but I think Brian Robinson is an underrated pass catcher. And I think Brian Robinson ends up being by the end of the year like the workhorse here. He was already the early down guy at the beginning of last year before being out for a, a lot of weeks in the beginning of the season, but he won that job in training camp. I think he's talented. I think he had a ton of catches out there in Alabama and will start to sneak into that role and take most of the goal line work there. So Gibson, I think, is going to be like – I think Gibson's going to have like the James Cook role, honestly. A.J. Dillon, like – I don't really know what to think about A.J. Dillon. I just never find myself actually wanting to draft him. Rashad Penny is another one with that entire Philly backfield. I will just let my teammates deal with that. Anthony Richardson is not a guy that I want to draft as the QB 11. Way too spicy for me. Way too early for me. Don't even know if he's a starter. Don't even know if he could pass the fucking ball. I'm good on Anthony Richardson. Outside of that, I'm fine with the rest of the guys. Zach Charbonnet might have more work if Kenneth Walker keeps getting hurt. David Njoku, I'm cool with that tight end. Pat Firemuth, I'm fine with that tight end. Dak at QB is cool. Tyler Boyd is just like a name that's going to continue. He'll be like the 109 ADP for the next five years, I feel like. And in round 10, Odell, hate his ass. And uh, same, same, same argument I had with Darren Waller, but this one might be even worse. It's been like five years since this guy's been good. Juju Smith-Schuster, same thing with him. This is a New England offense. It just doesn't pass the ball a lot. I think I'd rather just have Devontae Parker straight up over Juju. I'm good there. And Alan Lazard had like every chance to be an actual fantasy asset last year going into Green Bay as the wide receiver one with Aaron Rodgers and still like underperformed, underproduced. And now he is not that anymore. Garrett Wilson is is the dude there. So him, and then I would also throw Damian Harris. He's going so late that like pick 120, it feels stupid to be like, this is a bad pick. But Damian Harris was a guy that like before the injury happened at camp today, I had been telling you guys for the last couple months, I would be weary of him. 
whether it's getting cut or just losing the job to Latavius Murray, not a fan of. I just don't really I, I don't really want to grab the running backs in the Buffalo backfield until they really invest into somebody money wise or like first round capital. I don't feel like they ever feel the need to give one guy all the workload. I think they're cool with a committee and I think that's what we're going to get between Cook, Damian Harris and Latavius Murray. So don't love those guys either. So that was 10 rounds of it. We also have all these guys listed with our, you know, full explanations on dudes in our draft guide. It also has our rankings. So we've got our positional rankings. We've got our super flex and one quarterback rankings. We've got everything in here that you need for your fantasy football drafts. You can get it in one of two ways. You can either get it raw on bdge.shop at full price, or you can get it discounted. All you got to do to get it discounted is go to underdogfantasy.com. Go download the Underdog Fantasy app. The link will be right below. It'll take you right to the app store. If you deposit $10 or more using code BDG, they will hit you with a 100% deposit match on the platform so you can draft with us on there as well as get you that draft guide emailed for free. So you can go get it at bdg.shop, full price, 25 bucks, or on Underdog for $10. Plus, they're going to double whatever you throw down onto the platform, so you'll actually have $20 to play with, plus the free draft guide. So, whole lot of value. Whole gang of value, alright? And if you're part of the BDG gang, head down there, head south, go south, winter is coming, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel if you are new, and I'll see y'all tomorrow. <laughs>